Hey there and welcome to another Leak Code problem. So today we're going to be doing problem number 2719, count of integers. And this is the uh, six point problem on uh, yesterday's Leak Code contest, so it's definitely a tough one. So you're given two numeric strings, num1 and num2, and two integers, max sum and min sum. We denote an integer x to be good if the integer is between num1 and num2, and when you add up all the digits of the integer, those are between min sum and max sum. Return. The number of good integers, since the number may be large, return it modulo 10 to the 9th plus 7. Note that digit sum x denotes the sum of x. So you're given some example like this. And so it says there's 11 integers whose sum of digits lies between 1 and 8, and those are what they are. And the only one missing, I believe, is uh, 9, because the sum of the digits in 9 is 9, which wouldn't be in there. And so... For the second example, it's also straightforward. Now the main issue here is this right here, this constraint. So you can have 10 to the 22 integers. And so let's just say like a really straightforward approach you would think would be like, okay, well, how do I get the digits of a number? Pretty straightforward, right? I can, let's just say I have a number like 12. I can just keep modding it by 10, get a digit and keep doing that, right? And then I can add those digits and then maybe I can have some kind of memoization solution where like I have a number, I mod it by 10, I store that result in some kind of sum or whatever. Or I can even just have like, like let's say our memoization solution is we mod it by 10 we take that number, right? So whatever that is, 2 plus dp of, you know, once we get rid of that number, then, then what do we have? So dp of 1 and so on. And so the problem is with that kind of solution, if we have 10 to the 22 numbers, and even if we have a visited set, so we would have to have a number as our uh, as our parameter to the DP, to the memorization solution, where we just take every single number, we keep modding it by 10, and we will get repeated work, right? Because like if we have something like 123, and we do that, we do that, so what would that look like? Well, we would take three plus dp of 12 and then like we'll, we'll also do 12 as well right because we're doing every single number from 1 to 123 but the problem is yeah the what let's think of what the time complexity would be of a solution like that where we just take every single number and then we do the digits so for every single number that would be let's just call that n we'd have to take the digits and so the digits would be like log base 10 m n i believe and so this would be, even if you had something just that was n time, because this number is so big, our constraint is so big, that's why this problem is hard. Like if this constraint was like 10 to the 5th, 10 to the 4th, whatever, we could just go through every number and do that. And we could just chop off the digits. We can, you know, use memoization to save repeated work. But honestly, I don't even think memoization is going to save too much time, because if you think about it... Um, I mean, it, it'll depend on the exact problem, but worst case scenario, if we have some, like even if our constraint is like 10 to the fifth or whatever, if we have something like this, then when we chop up a digit, yeah, we're saving work, but for every single number in where, where you know, the biggest integer is non-zero, we'd still have to do all that. So memoization will save us a little bit, but if you actually think about the problem, um, it's not gonna save us that much because the, there's more numbers with this digit being non-zero than all of these combined, right? And so, same kind of base complexity, we're not actually going to save all that. Yeah, so time and space complexity, we're not actually going to save anything here, but we just can't have a solution where we go through every single number. So let's think of something else. So another thing we can do is Let's try to simplify the problem a little bit. So instead of saying numbers between 1 and 12, let's just say numbers that are less than or equal to 12. And then another thing we're going to do is notice that our sum is actually a really small number. So maybe we could do something. Also, if we go through like the digits, let's say, instead of every single number, then that would save us a lot as well. So let's try something like that. And this is kind of a clever solution. Um, I definitely did not think of it. So I had to look it up, figure it out. Um, and but it does work and it saves you a ton of time. So I'm going to show it to you here. Uh, yeah, and if you haven't seen it, 
you're it's it's pretty difficult to come up with. So what we're going to actually want to do is instead of going through every single number, what we're going to want to do is we're going to have some parameter like let's just call that num2 for now that we're actually going to be comparing to. And so let's say our num2 is let's just think of some random number like 3 4 6 8 or something or like the, you know something like that, whatever. Yeah. All right. Okay, there you go. So let's just say this is num2 and then num1 is whatever. We'll deal with that next. So let's solve the sub problem of getting every single number that is less than or equal to this that also has the min and max num that we want, right? So the min and max num, let's just say, let's just say min would be like one and then max would be like, let's just say 400 for now, whatever. Obviously anything, uh, or I'll just say 40, and eh, it's not 40, it's like 20, whatever. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Like this is not, because this only goes up to 400, the time complexity here is pretty cheap for us. Okay, and so what we're gonna actually do is, let's, visual, let's visualize our number like this. Instead of visualizing our number like a number, let's visualize it like a list or an array, you know, like that. And so our number is this now. And so what we're actually going to do, we're going to do a couple things. What we're actually going to do is this is our number. We are going to do we're, we are going to do dynamic programming. But now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through index by index in this number. So this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to go through index by index in this number. And we're going to try all possibilities that would that of numbers that are actually less than this number. So that's the first thing we have to figure out is how do we try all possibilities of numbers that are less than this number? Well, let's say we're at index zero. What number can we do? Well, the small, the biggest possible number we can have at index zero would be this three, right? Because if we have anything above a three, then our number is clearly not smaller than this number, right? So we would have to put in three at index zero, but notice that if you if we try a number like three now at all of these we can put in whatever we want or sorry no 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 so at if at three if so if we put this at three what what can we put in this next index what's the biggest number we can put in well it'll be a four right but notice what happens at any single index as soon as we put in something smaller than this three let's say we put in a two now at any next index we can put in any number we want right like if even if this is this nine 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 as soon as you know just normal comparison of numbers, as soon as the most significant digit of a number is smaller than that of another number, the rest of the digits can just be maxed and that number is still going to be smaller. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a couple things. We're going to need an index, let's just say index in our DP. And that's going to be the index we are at on num2. Then we're also going to need some kind of a Boolean and let's just call that check maybe or whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to call that check. And that check is going to is going to be true when so what we're actually going to have to do is we're going to have to go through like every single index and we're going to have to try every single possible number and then dp down but we want to make sure we don't try numbers that are too big because we only care about numbers that are smaller or or that are smaller than or equal to this number right and so what we need to do is we need to whatever index we're at we need to know is this check true or false and if the check is true that means we already used a number that's smaller than one of these somewhere and then we can, and then, and then, what would we loop through here to put in to put in any number? Well, we would loop through zero to nine, right? But if the check is false, that means we haven't yet used a smaller number. And so, whatever index we're at, the biggest number we can use is the whatever number is at the current index. So, like, let's say we put in a three here. We're over here. The biggest number we can use is a four. We can't use anything other than a four. That's the biggest because if we put in like that, that's bigger, right? But if we used in, but if if at any time if at any time we use something smaller, then we can put in whatever we want. So like if we put in three and let's say we put in a three here, now here and here and here, we can use whatever we want because three, three, anything is gonna be less than this number. So hopefully that makes sense. We just need to keep checking. Did we already use a smaller number? If we didn't, we can put in whatever we want. Otherwise we have to put in anything. We have to put in numbers that are less than or equal to this. And so we're gonna have this index that's gonna loop through this. We're going to have a check that's just going to be true or false. And then we need one other variable. And I think I called that cur in my code, which is just going to be the sum of the, the the current. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to we're going to total up the the sum of the digits. And so what that would look like is like, let's say we put in a three here. 
then what would we pass into the next DP? So we would actually pass into the next DP. Um, so the index is going to be index plus one, right? Index plus one. Now check. So check was false. It's going to start off false, meaning we haven't yet used a number that's smaller. Now, if we put in a three check is still false. So let's just say false and cur is going to be the sum of like our current sum. So whatever, whatever we had cur to begin with, plus the digit we're currently at. So let's say our cur is zero. So we add this digit would be, would be passing in three. Okay. And if we passed in a two, let's say now our index would still be an X plus one. Our cur would be two. So cur would be two here, but now our check would be true because we did use a number that's smaller than that's smaller than an, any number here. And now we know for, for numbers in the future, we can use whatever we want. So I, I do think this might actually work without this check, but think about how much space we save with the check. We save, we save quite a bit. Actually, no, 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 sorry. So we, we, we have to have the check. Otherwise we're just going to have numbers that are too big. So yeah, we definitely have to have the check. And so this way though, we don't have to compare like whole numbers too, because comparing whole numbers is going to be expensive. We can just compare digits of the current digit we're at. And we can use this check to know is our number already smaller or is it the same so far? And then we need to use something smaller. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. And then, so once we get, once we get to the base case, so our base case, we're going to have this curve that'll be some sum, right? Like our base case is going to be once we've checked through every single number, then all we have to do is we just have to say, is our cur in between the min and the max? And if it is return one, one meaning we have one successful number, right? And so we're just going to add, we're just going to add those up. So, so our, so our recurrence relation will have some res equals, you know, the sum of every single DP for every single number we can try. So sum of, you know, DPs, I'll show you, I'll show you that in the code, but anyway, so now that we got the, now that we figured out, okay, well, we got, we got one part of it, right? So we got the number of numbers. Oh, by the way, let's actually think about the time and space complexity for this solution. So we're going to be going through every single index. So index here is up to 22, I believe. That's 22. Now at every single index, we can loop maximum 10 times, right? We're going to loop zero to nine to put in every single number. Okay. So actually, instead of writing it like this, let's just write it like this. So let's just say we're going to go through n where n is the length is the number of digits. We can loop 10 times, but 10 is a constant. So whatever, that doesn't matter. Um, and then our check can either be true or false. So that's going to be only two, right? And then our sum can be anywhere from max and min sum, but that can only be 400. And so now you can kind of see that this number is going to be way smaller, right? Like let's say n, n the biggest number it can be is 22. So let's just call that 20. So what's that going to be? That's 200 times two times 400. So that's uh, eight, 16, zero, zero. So you can see how we, we got our solution down from 10 to the 22 to only 160. So now this number is not very big. So this should work for even if we had like 10 to the 80, 10 to the 90, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Like I've never seen a problem with this high of a, like this big of a number of constraint. But think about how how much farther down we got our solution. We got it down ridiculously down by using digits instead of checking every single number. And so we save a lot by using these digits. So we save a lot by using these digits and now we should be able to have a time complexity that we can do. So now let's think of the last part of the solution. So we got every single number that's less than nums two, right? We got some res that's less than or equal to n2, but what is our actual solution? So we need every single number between num one and num two. So how would we do that? Well, it's pretty straightforward. All we'd have to do is we can call DP again. And now instead of using num two, we can just use num one. And so now what do we get? So let's think about it. So we have, we, so we, we have, um, let's say, uh, like X is, is the number of digits that are less than num two. Uh, okay. So less than or equal to num two. I can't, I can't, all right. Okay. Okay. So now we have Y that's the number of digits that's less than or equal to num one. Num. Okay. So we have one, we have the other. Now, if we subtract Y minus X, 
now we get the digits that are less than or equal to, I'm just going to say N2 because I, yeah, okay. So the number of digits that's lo less than or equal to N2 that are, but now we subtracted the number of digits that are less than or equal to num1. So now it's actually these digits are greater than num1. So hopefully that makes sense. We took, now our digits are every single digit that's less than or equal to N2, but now it's greater than num1 because we subtracted everything that was num1 or less. And so we do have one more thing, and hopefully you can spot that. We Now we have digits that are, right? So let's say our res, whatever, is greater. It's easier to see it this way. It's greater than N1 and less than or equal to N2. Well, we missed one last case where our solution actually needs to be digits that are less than or, or greater than or equal to num1. So we need this equal to right here. And so we do need to check. We can just check by itself, is num1 a valid digit? So we can just actually take num1, figure out like what's the sum of its, dig it's the sum of its digits. That's not a costly operation. That's only one digit. That's like big O of one. And so then we would need to add that to res if it is. So hopefully that makes sense. So we get the digits that are this, less than or equal to n2. We get the digits that are less than or equal to n1. We subtract them. So this minus this, and then we have to add the digit if n1 is a solution. We have to double check that, and that's our last case. So let's take a look at the code, and I'm going to explain it. OK. So we have the visited, um, we have the visited set, or the visited hash map for the DP, which is like pretty, as, as in all DPs. Then we have this mod, because they're saying the number might be too big. And so if it's too big, return it mod 10 to 9 plus 7. So I just card coded the value there. And now we have our DP. And so remember what we said is if the index equals the length of N2, that means we've checked every single digit in N2 and now we're out of bounds. And now we just need to say, okay, what's our current sum? Is our current sum in bounds? Like, is it what we want it to be? If it is return one, if not return zero, one meaning that's a valid, that's a valid number. Then the second case is, is our stuff in our visited? That's just normal um, top down dynamic programming. So then I made this temp. And then this temp is the value of the digit in num2 at our current index. So like if we are, let's say, if our number is like 341 or something, and we are at index one, this is this, this digit. So yeah, I do want to get this digit because I need to check what our check is, right? And so if check is true, check is true, meaning we've already used a smaller number in, in like the numbers we check, right? So remember if we have 341 in these boxes, if we've already used a smaller number, like let's say we used a two here, now what what's the what's the biggest number we can use? Well, it can be a nine. So I just said, if check is true, now temp is gonna be nine. And then this is just their output. And then loop through every single number from zero to, uh, from zero to whatever temp is plus one because it's not inclusive. And so if if check was true, like in this case, if check was true, then we can loop here zero to nine. But if check wasn't, like let's say we had a three, then we would loop through zero to four. So that makes sense. So you loop through those and then you just, and the two conditions to make check equal true. So if check was true before, right? Like if we were to use a smaller number, then check is obviously gonna be true again, right? So like. If we used a two here, and then we use whatever here, then obviously here we, we can use whatever, right? Because our number's already smaller. Our check just means is our number already smaller? And so if check is true, or if we didn't use the max possible value we could, meaning in this part right here, like let's say we use a three, so temp here would be four, and so we're saying if we put in any number here, that's less than temp. So if we put in a three or something, then then in here we can do zero to nine. But if we put in a four here, now we have to do zero to one. So hopefully that makes sense. So, so temp here is actually going to equal, if check is false, temp is going to equal the value at the index of num2. And so we're just saying, did we put in a number smaller than that? If yes, check equals uh, true. Otherwise, same thing, but now check equals false because that means we put in the exact same number that's in this num2 and then all our other numbers are exactly the same as well. 
So then you just store that in the visited and I modded it with the mod to make sure it's small enough and return. And then remember, so what you could do technically is you can have this code, you can have another variable if you really wanted to of saying like, am I using them two or am I using them as one? But there's no need for that. And so what I did was I called I called um, DP with, in, so remember we started index zero, our starting sum is zero and our check is false. And then all I did was I made num2 equals to num1 because all this code uses num2. So then I just said like, okay, we don't need num1 anymore. So I'm just going to say num2 equals num1, meaning we're going to use this code again, but we're going to use it for num1. Because remember, we need to get every single number that's smaller than num2, which is the first part. And then now the second part is this. So when I say num2 equals num1, then we can get we can get the y value there. And so, and then I just subtracted from, from our first output to that. And then here's the, here's the last value you have to check where you have to manually. So this num2 is actually num1. So you, you could write num1 technically, that would be, um, that would work as well. So I just said, if it, what I did is I made a list out of every single number in nums1 out of every single digit. And then I added them up with the sum. And then I said, if that's in, if that's in range, then add one to the res and then return. So I think this should work as well. Okay, and so, but yeah, the main thing to figure out that makes this problem hard is how do I simplify down going through every single number? How do I simplify that down? Instead of going through every single number, I just go through digits. And and why, like that might not be intuitive. You might think like, oh yeah, if I go through these digits, I'm still going through every single number. So how does that change anything? But you got to realize that it actually changes it a lot. Because every single digit, you know, you can only have in, um, 10 times and then so on. And so th this would work. Okay, so let's think of the um, time and space complexity, by the way, here. Also, yeah, you gotta realize that like, yeah, th this just saves a ton of time. So let's do time and space complexity and then we'll figure out what it is. Okay. So time, it's definitely uh, quite a challenging problem, but I think if you do run into problems like this in the future, now you know how to make this a lot simpler. Like I think the, the actual code part of it like once you know what you need to do is pretty straightforward. So let's think of the time and space complexity here. And so what, what's the total number of things you can have? So remember at index, that's going to be a length of num2. So let's just call that num2 maybe. Okay. And cur is going to be max sum, worst case scenario. So whatever that's going to be. So that's like 400. And then at check, we can either have one or two. So that's just going to be two. So that's just a constant number. So it's going to be the length of num2 times max sum. And, that, and that's the key in this problem is like, you got to realize that max sum is way smaller than this. And so that's that's what you're going to want to use in your algorithm as opposed to going over, over every single number. Okay. And now there's a couple more things we got to do, right? So, oh, actually, sorry. We have to do the space. The space is the space in the visited set. So that's going to be num2 times max sum times two again, but that's going to be constant. And yeah, this DP, like the most this DP can recurse down, we don't got to worry about it, is only the length of num2, right? Because we're going to recurse like down every single digit. So that's not too bad. Okay. Um. Yeah, so we're going to be doing all these one time. We're, and this is our space, then the, this is our visited set that we're storing. We technically are doing DP twice, but that's just constant, so that doesn't matter. And then this is constant as well. Okay, so that's it for this problem. Hopefully you liked it. It was definitely a challenging one, but, you know, something you can use in the future. And if you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.